So if you watch a lot of astronomy content here on YouTube, you'll have undoubtedly come across tons of videos such as scientists have discovered planets more habitable than Earth, and four planets better for life than Earth. These statements are, in my humble opinion, completely ridiculous, and I'll explain my reasoning. How could it be possible for something to exist naturally that is better suited for humans than Earth was? Humans evolved to exist solely on Earth. That's like saying I found a stick that works better as a shoe than a shoe does. Shoes were designed to fit on a human foot. Sticks simply exist. They may kind of work like a shoe, but never better than the thing created to serve as a shoe. You may not like my analogy, but you can definitely understand what I'm getting at here. While I disagree with those clickbaity statements, I do think that there are habitable exoplanets out there in the cosmos. But I will dive into that topic a little bit later on, so for now, let's try to get a handle on the factors that make a celestial body habitable. The first and arguably most important is that the object needs to exist within the habitable zone of its parent star. Liquid water needs to be present on its surface. Too far away, water freezes. Too close, liquid water evaporates. Objects also need to be rocky. Life most likely can't exist on gas giants. The exoplanet ideally cannot be tidally locked to its star, allowing for more even heat distribution. Though some models show tidally locked planets could maintain habitable regions. The object's size and mass needs to be within 0.5 and 1.5 Earth masses. Too small and the planet can't retain an atmosphere, kind of like Mars, too large and it may become a mini Neptune with a thick, gaseous atmosphere. Also, the parent star needs to be stable. An unstable star could rip atmospheres away and this would be bad news for any budding life forms. So with all that out of the way, I've compiled a list of 8 exoplanets here and I'm going to start with the least potentially habitable and work my way up to the most. Also, if you happen to stumble across my YouTube channel, please drop a like or leave a sub. It's hard out here for a channel my size. Now, on to the video. Proxima Centauri b is the most commonly known exoplanet for sure, and the reasons for this are not because of its potential habitability, but more because of its location. Only 4.24 light years away from Earth, while it does orbit within the habitable zone of its parent star, Proxima Centauri b is most certainly tidally locked. And this is a huge problem because liquid water would boil away on the day side and freeze on the night side. Also, its red dwarf star shoots out huge amounts of radiation. These two things in tandem really hamper its ability to hold an atmosphere. I wouldn't put much stock in this thing being habitable. Ross 128b is a rocky world orbiting within the habitable zone of its parent star, similar to Proxima Centauri b. It is a mere 11 light years away from Earth and may have potential to visit this world with advances in rocket propulsion. The planet is only 35% more massive than Earth, receives 38% more starlight, and is expected to have a temperature stable for liquid water to exist on its surface, if it has an atmosphere. Big if. It may also be tidally locked, but its star, Ross 128, seems pretty chill compared to the most violent stars out there in the universe. Last studied in 2017, it was unknown whether this world has an atmosphere or not, but upcoming updates to ground-based telescopes would be able to scan for chemicals like methane and even oxygen to determine whether or not it has one. Tea Garden Star B. I have not mentioned this yet, but some scientists use a measurement to determine how similar to Earth a given exoplanet is. It is called the Earth Similarity Index. I found some conflicting information on this, but Tea Garden Star B was given a 0.90 on this metric. It is, if not the most similar, then at least one of the most similar planets to Earth using this index. Located 12.5 light years away from our solar system, it has 1.05 Earth's mass, which is the most similar to any planet on this list. Astronomers are estimating it of having a 60% chance of having liquid water on its surface, but only a 3% chance of having an atmosphere. Another possible downside is that this planet has an orbital period of only 4.91 days, which seems a little extreme to me. Like every other planet on this list, it is located within the habitable zone of its parent star. Kepler 22b. This exoplanet is absolutely famous for being habitable. People put this in their thumbnails all the time. But having a radius twice of what Earth has, scientists say that Kepler-22b is unlikely to be a rocky world like Earth, but more likely to be an ocean world, or even gaseous, although this is unconfirmed. This exoplanet does have a few positives going for it, and they are that it has a temperature very similar, if not a little higher than Earth's. It also has a longer orbital period than other bodies in this list, being 290 days. Some downsides, of course, like I said earlier, is that it is most likely a water world, making intelligent life as we understand it completely impossible. As well as the gravity here is roughly twice of what Earth has. Not the best for life, but it may be possible to train here like Goku did before battling Vegeta. Gliese 667 CC is a super Earth. 
an exoplanet with a mass and radius greater than that of Earth, but smaller than that of gas giants such as Uranus and Neptune. It is heavier than Earth with a minimum mass of 3.7 Earth masses. The equilibrium temperature of Gliese 667 CC is estimated to be 39.6 degrees Fahrenheit or something in Celsius, I don't know I'm an American, and it is expected to have a radius of 1.5 Earth radii. Of course, this is dependent upon its composition, which is currently unknown. Another interesting fact about this exoplanet is that it exists within a trinary star system. That's a system with three separate stars that all orbit one another. One thing is for sure, if this planet did have life, they would have some crazy views during the daytime. If it could ever be nighttime, you know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> TRAPPIST-1e You may have seen this coming if you know about exoplanets, but it seems although this planet is one of the most likely to be habitable. Even if this world specifically isn't conducive to human life, there are three other worlds in the same system that all exist within the habitable zone of their parent star. A detailed study of this planet in 2018 discovered that compared to Earth, it is 91% the radius, 77% the mass, 102.4% the density, and 93% the surface gravity. This all sounds really similar, but even better, scientists have determined that the surface temperature is normal enough to not boil water or be so cold that it freezes if it does exist on the world. The one downside, like many other exoplanets, is that it is likely tidally locked to its star, although this is unconfirmed, so don't give up hope just yet. According to the Habitable Exoplanets Catalog, TRAPPIST-1e is among the best potentially habitable exoplanets ever discovered. K218b Now I know that this one is going to be a bit controversial, so I'm going to tread very carefully and try my best to not get overly excited about K218b and just lay out the facts. But its placement this high on my list may tell you what I think about it. This exoplanet sits 124 light years away from Earth and orbits around the star K218, rather fast at a mere 33 Earth days. It is estimated to have a radius of 2.6 times here of what we have on Earth, which places it on the larger side for sure. Astronomers have been studying this planet for a while, and this is what they found. In 2019, the James Webb Space Telescope was studying this planet and found water vapor in its atmosphere, which is an awesome sign. And then, in 2023, other scientists discovered carbon dioxide and methane in its atmosphere as well. These findings could be interpreted in several different ways, but it means that the planet is either a water world or a gas-rich mini-Neptune. Without accounting for its surface temperature, this planet more resembles an ice giant such as Neptune or Uranus, rather than it does Earth. And that's where things stood for three long years. Now, the latest update for K218b is a brand new discovery and just happened about a week ago at the time of me writing the script. A team from Cambridge University discovered the existence of dimethyl sulfide in its atmosphere. The significant part is that this chemical only exists in one way naturally on Earth, and this is from life, specifically marine bacteria and phytoplankton. Scientists have also been able to recreate dimethyl sulfide in a lab from not life, so this is important to know. It was also discovered in quantities 20 times that of what we see here on Earth. Now these findings are heavily disputed by other researchers and even described as wildly irresponsible by one scientist. So until then, these findings need to be taken with a grain of salt. All that being said, K218b is definitely worth taking a closer look at when trying to find a habitable planet outside of our solar system. But I do think that there's one more planet more likely to be habitable than this one. Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just kidding, it's TOI 700D. Discovered in 2020, this planet is located 101 light years away from our Earth and is one of the most likely to be habitable. It is 1.16 Earth's radius and has an orbital period of 73.5 days. It receives about 88% as much sunlight as Earth does and has an equilibrium temperature of around 27 degrees Fahrenheit. But the temperature is likely to be higher if the body does have an atmosphere. This exoplanet was determined to have a magnetic field similar to our own Earth as well. This planet has a decent chance of containing life, but we do not have a lot of information on it yet. But what I will say is all the information we have seems to be good information, with the small exception of its mass. TOI 700D has a mass of 1.25 Earths, so gravity may be a little stronger there than what we experience. Now for the bold claim that I made in the title of this video as well as the intro. I think that this is true. I do believe that there are habitable exoplanets. Probably not equally as good for life as Earth, but at least similar enough. So why do I think this? Well, according to an article on the SETI Institute website posted in 2020, there are 300 million potentially habitable exoplanets in our galaxy alone. Now that's an estimate, but 
But 300 million is a number that you and I can hardly even fathom. So for the sake of argument, let's be conservative and say that just 1% of those 300 million actually do have life forms on them. That leaves us with 3 million planets in our galaxy alone that have life forms. Okay, awesome. Well, how many galaxies are there? Why 200 billion to 2 trillion, of course. Now, if I were to multiply 2 trillion by 3 million, we would soon get to numbers that have letters in them, so I'll spare you from all that. Now, I'm clearly no mathematician, but just really some dude on the internet. But you can see what I'm getting at. Not only are there habitable exoplanets out there in the vast expanse of space, but I'd be willing to bet money that there's actually millions of them just waiting to be explored. And also, I did do some research for this video, but at the end of the day, I'm just some random YouTuber, so it's best to be skeptical of what I'm saying here. And finally, if you stayed this far in the video, thank you. I really do appreciate you guys. Leave me some feedback on how I can improve down below. And if you're still wanting to see some more from me, please click this video linked over here in the corner and leave me a sub. So that's all for me. Bye.